Happy Saturday, everybody. Everybody, which is zero people as of right about now. Wow. We're 11 seconds in and there's... Oh, <laughs> there's my grandparents. I'll see you guys at the restaurant. Uh, okay, we got one person watching now. So, I'm visiting the town I was born in. Ladner, British Columbia. I actually don't make it out here very often at all. It's, it's always kind of trippy wandering around somewhere that you lived for, I guess, uh, 11 years, but then you pretty much haven't set foot in it in 11 years. Because, like, there's the weird little stuff that's the same. Like, London Drugs. As far as I can tell, London Drugs is, like, the chain store in Western Canada that's still stuck in the 90s. Like, if you walk into a London Drugs, you're just like, wow. You don't think about how much retail has changed until you walk into a retail store that hasn't in, like, two or three decades. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think, like, what else? Like, it's, there's the, uh, there's the bookstore that I like to go to. Um, actually, you know, I think the, I think the toy store that I used to always go to as a kid is actually finally gone. It was a little, like, non-chain, it was called Treasure Island Toys, and it's, uh, yeah, it looks like it's actually gone, but the Little Caesars Pizza that we used to get delivery from for like my sports day at school and stuff, that's still here. I don't know, man, it's weird. Anyway, today's video is gonna be a pretty spectacular one. Oh, but you guys have probably noticed I'm, 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 my last couple of streams, I've been pretty, uh, pretty doom and gloom, but even though I'm actually walking around in miserable weather, I'm feeling pretty good about it today. This week was pretty rough. Like, it actually sucked. Um, what happened? Like, we, oh, we screwed up the Note 8 video. So, I don't know if any of you saw the Note 8 video before we pulled it down. But what basically happened was, when I was writing up the video, I was actually in the car. Um, when I was taking a lot of my notes and when I was um, writing up some of some of the video and I wrote that one of the cool things about Bixby was that it could basically be used to execute macros on your phone which is neat and that it could be used to control system settings on your phone and I had said that this is better than competitors like Siri um, then, when I sat down in my office with an internet connection and was, you know, going through everything, I was like, oh, I better double check that. Maybe Apple's finally fixed that you can, and made it so that you can change your volume and adjust your brightness with Siri. And I was like, oh, they have. Oh, good. When was that? Oh, okay, that was a little while ago. I didn't notice because that's, frankly, a stupid way to adjust the brightness of your screen when you can just drag up from the bottom and move it ex like exactly where you want. Like, why would you want it? When you do say, you know, turn down my brightness, it turns it down like a huge chunk. So like, it's dumb. So I haven't done it. So it's never really come up. But um, anyway, so what I did was because I had actually already filmed the A-roll of the video by that point, because we were in a hurry trying to get this video out, um, I just struck through it. I listened back to the clip. I was like, oh yeah, this seems like something that we can cut out fairly gracefully. And then I put in a note for the editor. And I'm not gonna throw the editor under the bus or anything like that. So I won't, I won't say who it was, but whoever it was didn't see my note and didn't cut it out. And then I was in a hurry that day and I was working on other stuff and um, Nick reviewed the video instead of me before it went live, which is normally fine because he's like really good at catching little mistakes or like private information. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we've actually leaked very little stuff lately. I haven't had to change my phone number recently, for example. And, um, but he had no way of knowing that. Like, again, even though he's an iPhone user, it's not like it's ever come up for him that he's wanted to turn down his screen brightness with Siri or whatever. So, uh, so he didn't see it. And so the video went up and we had to pull it down. 
And what happens when you pull a video down is a couple of things. So number one is YouTube doesn't let you pull it down, make a small edit to it, because we actually could have used the YouTube editor to cut that out, uh, and then put it back live. You can do that, but it'll be very hard for people to, to find it. It's, it's like effectively like, like shadow pulling a video, like it won't really show up in people's feeds. Um, so your only other option is to re-upload a new video and then push that live. But what happens then is people get confused. Uh, people get uh, confused by the original video and the new one. They think they're the same one or they're not sure why they have two notifications. They, they don't really click on it. Or a lot of the people who watch in that initial rush, right when you publish a video, uh, and those people are like, the bomb by the way because that's what gives a video its momentum and that's what gives that's what propagates it to other people is that initial rush of people that watch it and then watch the whole thing through or click like or leave a comment or whatever the case may be that's what causes youtube's algorithm to pick it up so all those people that watched it right away the first time around well they already saw it so they don't watch it again. So what happens is the, the momentum of that video just tanks. It just does terrible. Um, so it was that. People hated the Tech Quickie intro. I actually did a stream over on the Tech Quickie channel sort of addressing the Tech Quickie intro, why we did it, um, why we're going to keep it there for a little while. Um, what else? People were upset about the Hyperloop video. People were upset about the not clickbait in the, uh, in the other video. So we just had sort of like one disaster after another last week but today's video is going to be different today's video is freaking awesome uh we had this this totally unheard of chinese company reach out to us about their dedicated piece of hardware that they created it's like a, it's an in-ear piece that um oh man it the idea is like sort of good and then you're just like, wait, hold on. Um, anyway, it's an in-ear piece that is supposed to translate in near real time Chinese to English. Now in the future, they'd love to add more languages, I'm sure, but for now it's very prototype. Like they sent us two of them, one of which is 3D printed to give you some idea. And... Um, and it only does English to Chinese and Chinese to English. And by Chinese, I mean Mandarin, not, not Cantonese. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, naturally, to try out a product like that, I was going to need some help from my good friend, Mr. Hung Chi Liao. Um, or wait, it would be Liao Hung Chi, I guess, because they, uh, they do the last name first over there, which is really funny because I, like, I, I had, uh, you know, badminton players that I'm a fan of, like uh, Lee Chong Wei, and I was like, oh, that's weird. Wei's a weird last name. No, no, his last name's Lee, and I didn't realize that for, like, I guess, probably years. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so Dennis speaks Mandarin, and so pretty much he and I try to have a couple of conversations through the WT2 translator, um, where we set up like a couple scenarios for ourselves. One is just like we're meeting a, a random stranger and uh, we're tr actually, I guess there's a few. I'm, I'm not sure how much of each of them made it into the final video. Like it's, it's mostly just bits and pieces, but you know, we just kind of are strangers who, who meet each other and like want to make friends. And then there's like kind of trying to order food. And then the last one we try and do like, okay, I mean, yeah, food's cool and everything, but let's see if it can handle what's really important. And I basically try to, like, pick up Dennis at a bar. And uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty funny. Um, we've had people on Floatplane who have watched it already just being like, yeah, this, this video had us pretty much in stitches. These are the kinds of products that are a lot of fun for us to do because, you know, you don't have to take it too seriously. Like, no one else is going to be coming out with a video about this thing, so, you know, we can just kind of have some fun with it. I don't think... It, it's not even available, so you, you can't really buy it. You can decide if you want to back their Kickstarter, but they're going to have all their usual, you know, Kickstarter promotional materials. You guys can kind of make up your mind based on that. 
we just got this thing early and we get a chance to kind of play around with it. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty fun video. So everyone's like, oh man, you're, man, you too. I swear, I thought Twitch chat was AIDS. And then, then I met YouTube chat because you guys are actually the worst thing ever. It's like completely unintelligible. You say nothing useful. It's astonishing. It's just F for days. F for days. I, I just, I don't... YouTube has some serious work to do on their chat spam or chat de-spamification um, program over there. Like they actually do have tools. Theoretically, there's, um, there's a slow mode where we can set it so that people can only post a message every 30, I think we can actually enter a number of seconds, like 30 or 60 seconds. And it just doesn't seem to work at all because we definitely have that feature enabled and it's clearly not working at all. Um, uh, what do we have coming up on Floatplane today? Oh, oh, we actually have, um, okay, so on, on Linus Tech Tips on YouTube, we have a kind of a lighthearted piece coming with the, uh, the in-ear Chinese translator thing. Man, there are some really fun translations. Um, on Floatplane, we've got Should I Upgrade to Ryzen? It's a more hardcore tech piece. Um, Anthony actually worked on that one. So uh, the WT2 was James's handiwork, like figuring out how the heck to use it without a manual at all. So I really have <laughs> respect to James because um, there were some pretty unintuitive things about it. And then um, for should I upgrade to Ryzen, that was, this was Anthony's hard work. So he busted his butt looking at not just the current hardware, because a lot of the time it feels like the typical review, um, the typical review exists sort of in a vacuum uh, where you kind of go, okay, here's this product and then here's the other product that you could buy, but it ignores what you already have. So we thought, okay, instead of just talking about should you buy Ryzen versus uh, KB Lake, which is, is a question a lot of people would ask, we're looking at more like, should you buy Ryzen if you already own, you know, Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge or, um, you know, an, F, an older FX series processor. So we're not just talking about like, what should you buy if you have a bunch of money and you own no computer today, we're talking about, should you upgrade to a Ryzen processor if you have sort of X class of computer from the past. So I, I hope it's gonna be a cool piece, especially for the folks out there who are, you know, looking at an upgrade. It's a, it's, it's a great time to buy a CPU. Crap time to buy a GPU, terrible time to buy a GPU. But it is a great time to buy a CPU right now. We just need to know if there's gonna be any kind of tangible benefit. Um, so we look at it from a content, uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, from a productivity perspective. And then we also look at it from a gaming perspective. And I think the answers aren't going to be quite as obvious as you guys might think. So that's up on Floatplane. So that means it'll hit YouTube in about a week. Um, I'm supposed to go join my family for lunch at some point, but I've kind of, I've kind of committed to do these daily live streams. Um, some people seem to like them. Some people are complaining about us spamming their notifications. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is, but we've decided to kind of try it and kind of talk to you guys about comments on yesterday's videos, um, how things are going over on our side, what's coming out, and there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go gonna go get some lunch. Uh, I think Nick's watching, so he's probably gonna punch today's YouTube video now. Um, I'm gonna wait until I see I'm gonna wait till I see him start spamming the chat with the link. And then that'll be up and you guys can go check it out. The uh, phone I'm using is a Galaxy S8 Active. I'm working on my review for this right now. I know that no one really cares about my Galaxy Active reviews because they're, it's an AT&T exclusive phone. Um, 
they, they don't tend to get a ton of views or anything, but I really like these phones. So, you know, again, it's sort of my, a commitment that I've made to keep doing something that might not have a value to anyone else. Um, I'm committed to keep reviewing these things until, you know, someone else cares and some other carriers start carrying these phones because I think they're great. It's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Um, it's got like basically a built-in bumper case. It doesn't have the infinity display, but oh, apparently this guy uh, this guy watches the channel. You're live, by the way. I know. Hey, don't use your phone while I'm you're. What are you doing using your phone while you're driving? I'm just using this phone basically to talk. You're actually watching a live stream while you're driving. Bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, bye guys, and see ya.